and now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November the 10th. Well, as we look across the world, the sad duo in the Eastern Pacific is still alive. Well, one of them is. Harry is a tropical depression still. Sandra is now a remnant low. It's day 313 of 2021, and so far we've had 87 storms form. It's looking more and more likely that that could rise a bit more as we get towards the end of the week into this weekend. Let's go to the Atlantic Basin on day 162 of hurricane season. The area of interest that was 0% last night is now Invest 96L, 30% as it races northeastwards, uh, generally uh, by day 5 being northwest of the Azores. This could get, get, get some uh, subtropical characteristics. Let's hope it doesn't, though. Uh, let's hope the Atlantic just stays quiet for the rest of the season. In the Eastern Pacific on day 178 of hurricane season, again, as I said, the sad duo is still here. Sandra is a remnant, and Terry is still a tropical depression, expected to hang on to that status for a bit longer before it turns to a remnant low. In the Western Pacific, we have no storms active right now. However, models are starting to pick up on potential formation out in the open Western Pacific out by day five. We'll have to see how that develops if they remain consistent on that. In the Northern Indian Ocean, it's a different story. 90A is, uh, we're putting it 0%. The IMD has put it down to nil, a uh, chance of formation after declaring it a depression. 91B is at 60% chance of formation. The JTWC is at moderate, which means that formation is uh, likely, but beyond 24 hours. And the IMD is actually at high uh, between the 48 hour and 72 hour period. We also have a larger area of interest marked 30% at this time as models are depicting the Bay of Bengal could get active with another system behind 91B. Moving to the Southern Hemisphere, Southwest Indian Ocean first, no storms are active here. Same case in the Australian region, same case in the South Pacific. No storms and no AOIs active. I looked at the models, not really seeing any hints of formation here over the next five days. Getting to the satellite imagery here is Invest 96L. It's looking all right. Uh, again, this was just designated Invest right before I started recording this. It is still frontal, but 30% chance that it could detach from those fronts and gain some subtropical or tropical characteristics. In the Eastern Pacific, it's kind of hard to pick out where Sandra is. It's, if you look south of the Baja California Peninsula, due south, you get to that convection, that's Terry. Northwest of that is Sandra. Very sad duo uh, for the Eastern Pacific in November, but they are still alive and they are still tropical cyclones. But let's move to the Western Pacific where we just have some general thunderstorm activity. It increases as you go west towards the Bay of Bengal. And if you look at the Bay of Bengal here, uh, you can see some thunderstorm activity associated with 91B. And if you look east, you can see some very cold cloud tops there uh, in, in portions of the far Western Pacific. And that may be contributed to uh, contributing in our future to our next system, potentially in the uh, Bay of Bengal. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we just have some general thunderstorm activity here. Uh, nothing really signifying tropical cyclone formation here. Uh, signals are weak generally over the next five days for the entire Southern Hemisphere uh, for tropical cyclone formation. Here in Australia, as the sun comes up, we have a beautiful extra tropical low there by New Zealand. Other than that, we're looking pretty good. Maybe some heavy rainfall there in portions of uh, Southeastern uh, Australia. If we get towards the South Pacific, we can see just some general thunderstorm activity affecting some of the island nations here. Uh, nothing really signifying tropical cyclone formation here uh, alongside the rest of the Southern Hemisphere. The sea surface temperatures for the Eastern Pacific are cooling off a bit. You can see right there, uh, especially south of that little divot that Mexico has, it's down to, it looks like 27, 26 degrees Celsius there. Uh, towards the coast of Mexico, it's still 28, 29 degrees Celsius, so it is still warm. We can see in the Atlantic Basin, it is cooling down here. We can see that loop current, though, still going strong in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that loop current is the one that um, brought Ida to a Category 4 earlier in the season. 
in the Indian Ocean for our systems in the Bay of Bengal. Looking piping hot, ready for that. We'll see if the environmental conditions can sustain themselves ready for that. Either way, regardless of the development, we're looking at heavy rainfall. The Western Pacific is uh, fairly warm, ready for any system that would form there. Again, we are looking at some weaker signals right now for formation at the end of the five-day period. And the Southern Hemisphere basins in all are warming up and pretty warm right now already for the uh, cyclone season. The anomalies, the Atlantic, despite all the cooling, is still generally above average. The Eastern Pacific, we're seeing a lot more near to below average areas in the eastern portion of the basin, and the wave pattern with that La Nina effect is really neat to look at and near the equatorial regions. The Central Pacific, as usual, is below average. Generally, the Western Pacific is generally above average. Same case in the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea, and in the South Pacific, South, South, uh, South Indian, and Australian region were generally above average for our cyclone seasons. Moving to the on this day section, we have only one storm tonight. This was Typhoon Ling Ling. It was peaking in the South China Sea on this day as a Category 4 with winds around 100, uh, 130 miles per hour. Sorry. And this was a significant storm because it caused over 300 fatalities over its lifetime, most of those happening within the Philippines and some of those happening in Vietnam as it made landfall there, I believe, as a typhoon. Very significant storm and, unfortunately, many lives lost to this powerful storm. Thankful. I'm very thankful that we're not seeing anything like Ling Ling. I'd much rather have our duo of disappointing cyclones in the eastern Pacific than Ling Ling any day. Moving to the on this day list. This is on this day list. That's a new one. The naming list for the Atlantic Basin. The next two names are Adria and Braylon. 96L could do that. We'll have to see. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names, if we do get them, are Vivian followed by Waldo. Waldo. In the Central Pacific, the next name is Hone. Uh, we're, we're asking the question, where's Hone rather than where's Waldo at this point. In the Western Pacific, looking bit quiet right now, but again, some weak signals of activity. The next two names are Neato followed by Rai. In the North Indian Ocean, we do have two potential formations that could take place. Uh, IMD, from what I could read, are expecting 91B to remain a depression, which would not get a name, but if it were to become a storm, it would get Jawad. And the next name after that is Asanai. Moving to the Southern Hemisphere Basin, starting off in Australia, the next two names here are Patty followed by Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovi. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.